Yeah. Let's get, get the, the show on the road here. We're a little late. We apologize. As usual, the digital technology is um, getting us fits. Um, saying that as a black white photographer, I'm not saying I'm married as a black white photographer. We probably will have a similar opinion for digital. Um, uh, Mayor Whaling comes to us from Kalamazoo. She's a professional photographer, professional photographer, educator. Um, she's the chairperson, uh, chair of photography at KIA, Kalamazoo Institute of Arts. If you've not been to the KIA, I recommend you do that. In fact, I just talked about it in my intro class this morning about getting over there. There's always a photo show or a permanent collection show of photos in the basement. So get over there, get some, uh, some points for going over there and, and enjoy it. Um, Mary and I worked on a project together in 04, um, 248, it was a photo essay, um, Two Cities, 48 Hours, where about 20 photographers uh, worked together to document Two Cities, St. Joe and Ben Harmon. And then there was an exhibition and a book that came out. So that's been 10 years, so yeah, no more. Yeah, that's where Mary and I met, um, and you know, we've been friends ever since. We both, again, have been in black and white and traditional, and kind of in general, but traditional um, darkroom printing. And Mary's prolific in photography. She's constantly doing something in photography. I think she's an inspiration. One of the reasons I want her to speak is she's going to be an inspiration for some of you folks who live and breathe photography every day. And that, you know, she's made a life with it. Um, and so it's inspirational for you if you can make a life with it as well. Um, Mary's going to, afterwards, my alternative class, um, my R295 special topics course, my alternative students, and I are going to head down to the dark room and we're going to do a, a demo with, with Mary and, and Bob Shimmons um, on the wet plate collision process. And I know Mary's going to talk about that today at the end of her presentation. Um, she has some prints to show, and I'm going to hand the reins over to her and um, let her uh, talk about the so Thank you so much for coming. Yes. So when Maya said 04, that means that was 10 years ago. And um, honestly, I've been photographing for 30 years. It probably started when I was some of your age, uh, Liz, <laughs> um, about, about that. And I've been um, learning new things ever since. It, it doesn't stop. And I started with a little single lens reflex camera and with uh, another friend of ours, Gary Saidella, who I would say is a, a, a terrific photographer and a wonderful mentor for me. And, um, and I just shot a lot of film. And I think we do that with digital, but when, you know, when film was cheap, I shot a lot of it. And, and because of that, I printed a lot of work. And I think um, when you see my prints, it, it sort of like, you know, I, I was able to start with, you know, 35 and make beautiful prints and then just bought bigger paper. So it wasn't like, I mean, it was kind of scary to jump up with the paper size. But when you learn the nuts and bolts of photography is, you know, my starting point of, um, then you can start to jump off and, you know, and then focus on subject matter. And, um, golly, I have prints back from the 80s here. So, and hopefully you'll see a consistency with the technique and printing. Um, with, when I started photography, I picked up a camera because I wanted to photograph my kid. And I wanted to make black and white prints, and therefore I learned how to do that. And what, and I want to start with a nice family image. And so what I did was document my life and my family, relentlessly. <laughs> this is, I went through stacks of prints and pulled um, different, a few prints from each various um, series of work that I've done. But they have been photographed extensively. Um, and I did have an order here. 
show you a couple more of the family ones. Um, and then, as I was learning photography, one thing that I had the opportunity to do was take workshops. I, I attended as many as I could afford and that came my way. One of uh, the most inspirational workshops that I had was with Larry Fink. He's a pretty amazing photographer. I'm guessing you may have his book in the library here. If not, you could easily see his work online. But he photographed with his square format. I believe, I don't know if it was a Roli or Maria. It was just a twin lens square format. And I got that camera, and it sort of like changed my world. It's, it's, uh, it was really exciting to have a camera, look through it, and every, everything looked great. So again, um, but then you know, I have to step back and say, okay, now I need to figure out how to use this square and how to fit things in. And then, um, so and I really loved one uh, something that Larry did. It's just like he used flash in a way, but then he also it's like this intense energy um, that that his work is about with these small moments and. And I, you know, again, photographing my family. And, and, you know, sort of like making the snapshot and then just making it grand by printing it so large. I, and it's, it's fun for me to go back and see these because these guys are now in their 20s. It's so funny to see these juicy little babies and the, to see them now as grown men with their own kids. And I just, you know, I come from a really big family, and we all have kids. And just to capture these really beautiful moments is what I set out to do. This one might be hard to see from a distance, but the other thing that I'm doing as I'm, you know, shooting and printing is as I took the shot. This is that's how I print it. And I think they're, you know, we're kind of old school. It's like, you know, you do the work in the camera. You know, you, you frame in the camera so that when you go to print, it sits on the page just right. Really tight edges. Framing on this one, you know, it's like all these things happening in these sections. So that first photo that I showed you was of my brother's wedding that my entire family got together for. And this is just, you know, this is a little small group of the entire clan. And that, and I was doing, and I was actively shooting weddings for money. And this gal hired me to do her wedding. And I was able to do a bunch of weddings for a number of years that were really fun because I got people like this gal and that would hire me because they liked how my work looked and then I would you know, print it. And they sort of let, let me loose because one, weddings were about family, getting dressed up, good behavior, <laughs> all those things. And, and I was able to do that. And so I sort of like took what I knew here and did it for money. And, and honestly, it was fun. And then to have somebody want big prints like I like to make. Those days are over, my <laughs> friends. Except for you know people like photo people or designers or artists. They're interested in having that kind of work done. But now digital is like, shoot 2,000 photos, make sure no stone has been um, unturned or uncovered. Make sure you cover everything at the wedding. And it's just, just it's too much. It's, it's, it ceases to be fun. So I rarely do weddings. But I would probably do one 
or an artist. With all of my work, I mean, I constantly go back to my family for they're my resource, they're my inspiration. But I, I like to work in series. And I was lucky enough to do some traveling. And again, I was, I, I can't, I'm so old I can't remember how old I was when I met. But I was in college and I got a grant to go to Spain. And, and it was my first big trip abroad. I had a ton of film. I probably took two cameras with me, just, you know, the backup. And I was shooting um, a medium format camera that had, you know, it's called a Bikina, so it had a really big, beautiful negative. And so I took what I knew about photographing my family, and I went to Spain. My son was went with me, and my Spanish was really I, not much, not too much Spanish. But I was with my son, and he was about nine at the time, and we just traveled around, and we hung around, and I photographed. And we went to little villages. And again, I'm just drawing on how I approached my own family and the kids in my family, and I photographed. This was this very, very small village, and this, I love this, this older woman, because you can just hear her and the advice that she's giving this young girl, and, you know, what's, what's this kid going to do? But, yeah, I'm not right. But, but there's just a really sweetness about this, yeah. And, of course, you know, once you've traveled somewhere, you can't stop. So then I went to Ireland, and again, the luxury of just wandering around to photograph, I don't, I don't know what's better. I don't know what better thing to do. Say again? <laughs> yes, and, and this was 89. I only have a couple of prints in the box from Ireland, but this was one of the most beautiful space spots there, Cador, it's on, it's on the west coast, and just really beautiful. And the other thing, you know, as photographers, and this, um, and this is kind of a wonderful example of it, is the lighting, and what happens, and when do you take a picture. So many people say never cut a body part off. But you know what sticks it up ahead there? Yes. Like big no no, big no no. And I I like a lot of um, like the group shots that I've done for my and then I mean like group as in not supposed to group, uh, like a mass of kids with body parts cut off. I have so many people tell me never do that. Um, I do it all the time. I, or maybe not so much now that I'm doing tin types, but I, I guess you know I. I think if you always do it at your style. Well, and also if it if it did if it if it was awkward down here, mm -hmm. and it, it's I like a joint. Right. right. But okay. it, it depends. You know, it all comes into. Does it make sense? Right. I understand that. Like. Right. Right. So it's like. Where it, it, it depends on is it a school portrait or is right. it your fine art work okay. and, and to make those choices. And I'll just I have just a couple more and cutting five parts off. <laughs> but seriously, um, traveling and 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 sometimes not knowing the language forces you to really look at things. Um, because you can't, you know, you can communicate this in a way, but, but what I'm doing, I was there to photograph. And you do have to communicate with your subject to get the photo that you are hoping to get. Um, 
but again, you know, traveling, pretty fantastic. This was a most amazing trip. This, these are from the Philippines.
a little bit interesting, where you are just this glass table and what have you know this this the angle of view. Whose lives are so entirely different. 
from one another. So that was, and I went all over. It's like when I start a project, it's like, oh geez, I gotta go down to Stevensville. I step a pageant schedule, and but you know, you just, you, you just, I just did it. It was just one of those things, and that was fascinating. And the whole thing of like, okay, this is my idea. This is the project I want to do. And then you make some calls and figure out how you're going to do it. And it's sometimes just looking in the newspaper to connect you with somebody like you want to meet. I've met people on the bus. Like, can I come over? But, um, we see that one I covered it. This, this yeah. one? Okay. If I'm not stupid, you're heading. Oh, no, I was almost going to say, okay, well, we better move on. But this, this is a project, um, again, one of those things, somebody mentioned something to me, and I'm like, really? And then um, Bob and I and my husband, Dave, we went over to the Ionia Free Fair because they had a sideshow, a real sideshow. And they had performers. And it was the world of wonders. What's that guy's name? Wade Ward. Wade Ward and the world of wonders. It was this traveling uh, sideshow with sword swallowers and fire eaters and, and uh, knife walkers. And so we just kept going over there and photographing. And this was, you paid a dollar extra to go see this. <laughs> And they, these were babies in jars. So and it was it was wonderfully cheesy and theatrical, but because they weren't real really babies. Yeah. And and then the, um, I love this kind of stuff. This is it was the painted sideshow bands. And again, just I, they are amazing in themselves, but as photographers, we don't really need to own that, but we can take a little piece of it. We can take a photo and take it with us. Mary, it looks like you've transitioned into a higher dollar camera as well. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. This, and aren't I just a snob? <laughs> <laughs> the, Black border around again. It's just like one of those photo people things. Yes, I am printing the entire image, and yes, I have a Hasselblad. <laughs> There's little notches on the film. It's a signature. It's like a telltale yeah. signature. Yeah. But man, that is a beautiful camera. It is really, really lovely. Yeah, I put you on the spot because I've got a, got a Hasselblad we've done a little bit, but I tell the students to shoot the Hasselblad. Have to go black or show us the little yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this probably, I can't remember what this was taking, but I had um, a, a range finder square camera, the Lumia 6. Beautiful camera. Really nice, lightweight, easy to manage. I don't know what time it is. Um, no, up here, here. Perfect. Okay. What I have for a while. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to run through a number of slides. If I, so, Ryan, how do I do, do I just click the arrow button? Oh, uh, yeah, Mary. And it's um, more, well, it's, it's more recent work. Again, one of those, um, edges that give it away what it is. It's a done by chromate print. And I just, you know, my name is not printed on the actual print. I just use it for a cover image. Um, but you can see that I have three different colors going on to make a color print. Um, and it's, it's a really beautiful process. It's an early process of color printing. Extremely time consuming. This is where Ryan and I met. I, we were both involved with this 248 project, or 
and that was the St. Joe Benton Harbor, where they just, there was a call of friends of ours, Dave Knight, Tom Brain, made a call f for photographers um, to descend upon St. Joe and Benton Harbor and document it for two days. And there were, I think, three of us, myself, Ryan, and Gary Sayadella, who actually shot with film. There were actually, there were, well, black and white, I should say. I think there were some other film people. But we just wandered around and photographed. They, there was no, I mean, there were lists and um, ideas thrown around. But for the most part, we just wandered around and photographed. We did what we did. Yeah. Yes. So, And they they gave us a list of things that were happening and to you know show up if if you wanted to. And back to beauty. Um, I am still shooting film. I put a um, pinhole cap on my uh, two and a quarter camera, and I photographed objects that were in my house when uh, it was my husband's family home. So I. Again, looking close to home for a project to do. And so I just started photographing all these things in the house. And these, these prints are actually maybe two by two inches. I printed some slightly larger. But the pinhole on a, you can put you know, make a cap and so you can use roll film. I know you guys are using pinhole handmade cameras, but it was really great to use uh, film because then I could print it. And, and even so, the negatives are still soft. This is thrown in there um, and it's a little bit garish, but I, I do a lot of projects and I just, do a lot of photography that comes to no money whatsoever. But, you know, occasionally, like I mentioned, I get grants. But I actually did a photo, and it was used for a book cover. And it, it was very exciting. And I was paid. Uh, Bonnie Jo Campbell, she's a Michigan writer. And then, again, you know, I. I shoot with my iPhone all the time. And then I've, I've made digital negatives, and then I made silver prints. Just contact printed and made these little, the, these prints are also small. These are probably four by four inches. And then I learned wet plate from my friend Bob. And um, this was one of my first shots that I took. And I, um, again, you know, it's back to my own community. And I um, knew about this fellow who had this amazing collection of stuff and who was a real folk artist in Kalamazoo. And I asked him if I could come over and photograph his stuff. And I, I went over many afternoons to um, just to photograph what just the way he had it set up um, and various wonderful things, um, individual things he had. Um, this is actually nine plates that I just assembled into one little block. And, and uh, Murphy was nuts over um, African-American cowboy stuff. And he, he uh, constructed these dioramas. And this was the, the hotel where Martin Luther King was shot. And then, I mean, this guy's house was a museum. In his basement, he had created these other dioramas about slavery. 
this uh, again, um, just going through uh, lots of different things that I've done. Um, these are actually s actual stereo. I shot with two cameras, and um, if you look at them cross-eyed, you may see them in 3D if you're able to. Otherwise, most of us need the viewer. But just the, the whole notion of the history of photography and, and the stereo views and, and what people did before TV to sit around, and, and we still do this, sit around and pass the cards and view them with the viewer. And they're so magical that you, want to, you can just step right in, into these scenes. I have um, two Brownie cameras that can take 120 film. You can still find them. It's, I think, a Brownie number two. And I, I taped them together. Of course, one is upside down, but not really, because the, the lens is exactly right in the middle of the, the face of the camera. But the um, advance, film advance, are on the side. So I just tape two together. And they're the perfect distance, like a, a regular store-bought stereo view um, camera would be, with the distance between the two lenses. Genius, by the way. Yeah, it's so much fun. These are in Greece. And you know, once you start playing with them and, and shooting with it, you, you understand what makes a really fantastic 3D view to have something in the foreground, middle, and back. And it's just Again, just walking right into it. And I went to Greece and I took um, the stereo camera, my iPhone, and a little point and shoot camera. And it was perfect because it was traveling really light but still photographing like a maniac. And these are all with the iPhone and then turned into digital negs. And then cyanotype. And then again, um, this, I think I'm coming towards the end. This is uh, tin types, the wet plate collodion, what the process that we'll be playing with this next week. And this is, um, these were shot at John Coffers, and he is like our mentor and uh, teacher who taught us how to really pour a plate. And every year he invites everybody, anybody who's been in a workshop back to his farm just to hang out and photograph. And these are from one of those jamborees. across the top where it's curved. When you pour a plate, you can, you can decide how, how you want it. I mean, I could pour a puddle on, you know, like a blob of a ghost, you know, and where, where you've poured that collodion is where the silver is going to adhere to it, and that's what's going to be light sensitive. Yes. It's it's an old farm with lots of old machinery and just funky setups. Some flowers. That's um, I told Bob I was going to sneak my little grandson in here somehow. This is his uh, I. There's a book arts center in Kalamazoo, and um, the woman who runs it, who's one, one of the people who run that, lent me some type, and I just set it up, because of course you know uh, book type is backwards. And so when you shoot with a, uh, a tin type, it, it's going to 
correct it. And so it's right. Does that make sense? Well. Babies don't hold still. At all. Except for this one. And this is um, this is my one of my little nieces. Well she bruises on her legs. And she's just she's amazing. And get this is a project that I started a couple years ago, photographing the Kalamazoo River. And these next few are all in the same place. And it's just amazing um, how one little stretch of the river can be so different depending uh, when we got all that rain last year. What's the average exposure time on some of those shots? 10, 20 seconds. Is that wide open, like F8? Probably F8. And finally, this is my new project on photographing birds. This was at the um, museum in New York and shot with just my digital camera. This is um, a gum bichromate print. And you can see the cyanotype. You all process people have probably done cyanotypes. And so when I make a gum bichromate print, I start with a base of cyanotype. It sort of lays down that blue, and then over it goes yellow and magenta. Um, and what's really cool is this, this image was never shot in color. And it was um, from a, one of my tintypes. And I have the actual tintype up here up front. But um, my daughter took an ornithology class at Western, and she told me about her professor and the specimens that, that um, Dr. Bill showed her. And I'm like, oh my god, how, what, how, I, I'm joining the class. I, um, but I didn't join the class, but I did get a chance to finally meet Dr. Gill and look at the collection. And um, so that's, that's where I'm at now. When you do these um, gum prints, are you doing, uh, well, you said that you use the tint tape for the one, but um, are you doing um, digital negatives or are you using? Yes, I am. I'm scanning, I'm scanning my plate, my tin type, and then. Uh, print digital negatives? Yes. Have yeah. you done it with film before? Mm, no. Because I, I want, um, you know, con gum bichromate print, cyanotype print, they're all contact printed. Right. And if, if, depending on the size of your negative, it's going to be determined the size of your print. Right. I think part of the impetus of that question is that there, the alternative class is learning lift film right now. And they're all really big in it. So some of them are, are we're doing cyanotype after midterm and then dike. Some of them are, are trying to decide whether they want to use their lift negatives or make digital negatives to, to make sanitizers and then that's, you know, We don't have time to fill in balance in such an intensive process, but, um, but sanitizers are next up. This is um, Van Dyke over cyanotype. And it's, you know, sometimes you just, not really sure what's going to happen. And this was one of those times. And I, I didn't cover the whole print with Van Dyke after I, I had made the cyanotype. And so it kind of bleached and did some fun things there. So, uh, I attempted her combination of the two. And whenever I layered the Van Dyke over those, the cyanotype, and I would do it before printing, uh, the Van Dyke would just wash it out. 
of the sine wave. Maybe you're reversed and you're going with the head back first, and then sine wave over top. It does really crazy layering. These are, again, the project, um, more of the birds, and some of the, and it seems like the, the, the more decrepit little birds in Weston's collection were the ones that we were most drawn to. And this poor little hummingbird, but um, we bent these wires for us to use so, so that I could photograph. So you're actually able to pick them up and model them? Yeah. Um, no, they're, they're, these, this guy's wing is out, these guys um, were kind of, well, I don't know what they were, they, they weren't, they weren't considered the specimens, they were more like, this is what people did for decorations and, and hats, so, more less. Yes, less like this guy. I think he actually lived in one of those tubes. You know that they put the specimens in. And you can see their little tags. These are only, uh, these are straight ahead tin types. I have the actual birds that I can use and um, set up. And I actually, this is kind of what I do. I just sort of set them up, think about them, rearrange them. And these are just little digital shots in my backyard. <laughs> So your camera's over top then, or, or you? Yes. Yeah. Yep. On those last last ones, sometimes I'll set up the camera and shoot. Um, set them up with a on a tabletop with a backdrop, but I've been setting my camera up and shooting directly down. And you're just using daylight for your light. Yes. Uh, oops, and there he is. Oh, <laughs> um, that's the end of the slideshow. But that's Leo. <laughs> Going through and, and um, finding, finding things to bring you guys across. I was going down memory lane and it's like, oh, well, maybe I should show the video.